Dr. Kyle Richards is here now talking about the use of apps in urology. I think a lot of people don't even know what is available at this point. So give us a little bit of an overview. Apps have really taken off uh, in the healthcare field uh, really the past 20 years. I remember when I started medical school, I received a personal digital assistant or PDA, and that was my first exposure to apps, and that was in 2007. And then in 2010, these tablets came out, uh, Apple started, and then uh, we also have had you know, a, just a plethora of, uh, of smartphones that have come out. And with that, there have been hundreds of thousands, if not um, over a million apps that have, have followed. Um, and many have come into the, the healthcare space. And as a healthcare provider, uh, some of these apps are useful for us, uh, others are you know, less useful. And it's hard to sort of sift through to figure out which, which of these apps uh, are, are useful in our day in and day out practice. An app for a healthcare provider has to uh, help us to make a diagnosis, it has to help us to find a good treatment, has to help us to pick a medication to treat a patient with, uh, and it, it has to be something that is at the point of care, um, so it, on your phone, on a tablet, uh, and, and we can use these apps to help uh, hopefully improve the outcomes of the patients that we care for. Time is so critical for physicians right now, and I think the demand is really increasing. How much are these apps helping with that while still allowing for that very important communication with patients? Yeah, so, so a good app should uh, allow you to be more efficient uh, with your day in and day out work and, and a lot of healthcare providers are being asked to see more patients in shorter amounts of time. Uh, we're asked to go to multiple hospitals oftentimes, uh, different clinics throughout the facility, go from the operating room to clinic and back and forth. So you have to find out ways to make your life easier, to become more efficient in how you take care of your patients and a good app allows you to do that. So if you have the app on your phone, how are you getting past some of those privacy concerns for patient data? So there's a, a couple of apps that I think uh, many of my colleagues use for clinical care uh, that are HIPAA, HIPAA compliant. So Doximity is a good example of one that's HIPAA compliant and that I think really took off uh, for clinical care at the start of the pandemic when we had shifted towards telehealth and making a lot of telephone calls to patients from home. And the nice thing with the Doximity app is you can call a patient through the app from your own personal cell phone and it looks like the call is coming from the hospital. So that protects the provider uh, and keeps their you know, cell phone out of their uh, patient's hands. Another example is a, a very common uh, electronic health record uh, that's used around the country is Epic. And Epic has a platform called Epic Haiku, which is also HIPAA compliant. So it protects the patient's uh, private health information and it allows providers to access some of the electronic health record from their tablet or smartphone uh, in a confidential way. So I'm hearing you say you can do this from your living room. Is it invading the personal time of the physician or are those things that they would be doing anyway so it's really reducing the amount of time you're spending working even from home? So I think uh, it, it, as a provider, I think providers have to be careful about that. Uh, so you have to sort of find some separation, some work-life balance, so to speak. And um, so many a time after hours, messages um, will be addressed on the next day. Uh, you have the clinical staff oftentimes in the office to help address those uh, messages that come through. So you have to you know, ensure that uh, you're not uh, you know, constantly checking your, your messages after hours. Uh, it's, it's a struggle that a lot of us have to, have to deal with. Right, but overall, I think it's helping both patient and physician. Absolutely, yeah, these, uh, there are apps um, um, to help physicians do their job and then there are apps on the patient side uh, to help them communicate uh, with their providers, also to help them, uh, for instance, uh, there are a, a, a plethora of apps to help patients uh, collect data at home that can then get transported to their provider or they can uh, use that app 
uh, to collect their data at home, whether it be their voiding diaries or uh, other cancer-related uh, types of outcomes. They can bring that data with them on their app and show that to the provider, or there are some electronic health records that can integrate that data directly uh, from the patient's uh, 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 device. Right, and that sure enhances care. Dr. Richards, thank you for being here. Thank you.